Yeah. Miles46HD here and welcome to today's video. Now today's video is going to be a continuation of my uh, half review, half uh, preview of the Champions League uh, this season and then today I'm going to be looking back obviously on the uh, the first leg of the quarterfinals that recently happened this week and looking ahead to the second leg next week. So yeah, let's get into it. Now the first game I'm going to talk about in this video is the game between uh, Juventus and Ajax which is obviously happening in Turin in the second leg next week. Um, now after the first leg, which obviously ended in a one all draw, giving Juventus a very vital um, away goal uh, looking into their home leg, um, Ajax played really well in my opinion. They did uh, very well to even get a goal against Juventus, who have been amazing this season despite um, losses in the uh, first leg of the uh, round of 16 and also a loss against Manchester United in the group stage. They've looked amazing this season, but I think Ajax can quite easily beat Juventus. They've got to hope that the uh, attacking mind of their players is uh, very, very good, and also they need to be very defensive as well, with obviously Juventus having the amazing attack of uh, Ronaldo, Dybala and Cuadrado. And as far as what I could see the score being, it's um, it's going to be, yet again, very tight, like it was at the Johan Cruyff Arena, obviously Ajax's home stadium. Um, I could see, though, it being 2-1 to Juventus, because I think Juventus will go 1-0 off, Ajax will nab a goal back, it will um, settle for a bit and then Juventus will go and get the uh, second goal to take them through to the semi-finals of the Champions League and it could be completely different, like always in the Champions League it could be completely different to what I actually say because it's only my opinion and what I think is potentially going to happen um, and I think as far as goal scorers are going to go, it's Ronaldo's definitely going to be on the score sheet after scoring that amazing volley obviously in the first leg um, which was I'm trying to remember actually it was it was on uh when Wednesday night, yeah, it was on Wednesday night. Um no Tuesday night, that's my fault. <laughs> but um but you know it's um it's gonna be a tight game, as I've already said already. It's gonna it's gonna be a very, very tight game. Now moving into the second game of uh Tuesday evening next week, it is arguably a very, very, very big game in the Champions League. As far as United are concerned, it's the game between uh, Manchester United and Barcelona at the Camp Nou in Spain. And Barcelona have a very, very, very good um, record in terms of uh, winning in the Champions League at their home ground. They have an amazing atmosphere, their fans are amazing, and their play can be amazing in the Camp now, which is going to be honestly making it very difficult for Man United to overturn a 1-0 uh, home loss, uh, which I just want to get out of my head to be honest because it was a bit of a disappointing game as far as it goes Man United try and score because we had some good shots in the uh, first half and a few good shots in the second half we did turn it up a bit but not enough to beat this uh, very 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 good Barcelona side um, and I think Man United will score at the count now whether it means uh, nothing in terms of what the result is at the end or whether it could mean a lot in terms of uh, what happens, whether the game goes to extra time, or whether um, Man United somehow managed to win on like away goals or something. Um, as far as obviously what's happening with our squad at the minute, we still have a few players out with injuries, such as um, Ander Herrera and Nemanja Matic, which um, don't look like they're going to be back in time for the second leg, which um, in no doubt will be disappointing to some United fans, but McTominay has played well. Dallo, obviously, very inspiring in the win against PSG in the round of 16, which is one of our greatest nights in Europe. Um, and then moving on to Barcelona. They're ruthless. As I said before, they've got the strike force of Suarez, Coutinho. They've even got Dembele and obviously Messi. It's They've got a lot of capability to bring fresh legs on, maintain the lead, and obviously they've got a good defence, obviously, to Stegen. Uh, and Titi, and they've also got PK as well um, in defence. It's it's going to be very hard for United to break them down, as they proved in the first leg. Once they went 1-0 up, they had very confidence to sit on the ball, pass it around us, which honestly made the game a bit boring as far as uh, United fans may have concerned. But for um, Barcelona fans, it was a very good joy to watch. And I think as far as the score could go, I would say... 2-1 United. Now, I know that's a very, very um, unlikely scoreline considering they really struggled to score in the first leg, but I could see it happening. Like Unlike um, PSG, which was absolutely amazing, 
I could see us um, doing even better against this uh, Barcelona team because a 1 0 home loss, yes, it's an away goal, it's no goals for us, but it wasn't that bad. It, it could have been a lot worse considering Suarez could have scored, Messi could have scored, even Coutinho could have scored at some points. I don't think it was actually that bad, and even though maybe on the night I was a bit frustrated and um, and thought we didn't actually play that well, but when you look back on it um, in the stats, we didn't actually play that badly. Um, so yeah, it's gonna. I would say it's going to be 2-1 United, and I definitely can see Lukaku being in the goals again, and definitely could see Rashford being in the goals, so... Maybe it will go Messi scoring, uh, then it will go like Lukaku scoring, and then Rashford maybe scoring late on, like he did in the um, in the PSG game, of course, for that incredibly powerful penalty. Honestly, if I was Buffon, I'd have been scared myself. Now I'm going to be moving on to the games that are happening on the Wednesday evening of next week. Um, the first game I'm going to talk about is the uh, Porto Liverpool game, which is obviously happening at Porto's home ground in Portugal. Um, now, Liverpool have had a very good first leg. Uh, they won 2-0 uh, through Firmino and Naby Keita. It was just... It was expected in terms of Liverpool, considering how well they beat them last season on their road uh, to obviously the final in Kiev. Um, I can just see Liverpool doing it again. They'll either win uh, 2 or 3-0. They'll put the game to bed, because it's going to be hard for Porto, uh, considering obviously they got no away goals, which would have been very vital, even if it had been... 2-1, it would have made it very, very interesting, because obviously if Porto were to get one goal and stop the rampant Liverpool side from scoring, it would have put them for on away goals. Um, but Porto, I think Liverpool are a completely different class to them there. Obviously Porto are one of the biggest teams in the Portuguese league, um, in my opinion, but other people may think different. Um, and obviously Liverpool were battling for the title in the Premier League with Manchester City this season. Uh, they've done incredibly well to get this far. Uh, considering it was in doubt in the group stage some points with um, a loss against Red Star Belgrade and then just uh, scraping through um, in the uh, final game of the group stage. And I think as far as the scoreline goes, I could see, as I said, it being uh, 2 or 3-0 Liverpool. And I think I'm probably going to go 3-0 with um, hopefully Salah, Mane and Firmino scoring, which would be a dream each of the front three uh, getting uh, three goals. And um, even though um, Porto obviously have a chance still with two not being the most massive of score lines compared to last season, it's going to be very difficult for them considering they didn't get an away goal. But you never know in the Champions League. And obviously uh, Liverpool are looking to try and win the Champions League um, after unfortunately what happened last season in the final against Real Madrid. And I know... Liverpool fans are not going to want me to mention that, but I just did, to be fair, so there's not much I can do now. Um, and yeah, I think they are one of the teams that are in the contention of winning at Liverpool, so I do hope that they can get to the final, bring the uh, English trophy, uh, well, the European trophy, not the English trophy, but it looks like they'll probably win that as well. As well? As well? As well? As well. Um, as well. <laughs> but... Um, it's uh, it's going to be very good if they were to win it because obviously they haven't won it since that amazing night in Istanbul a couple of years ago, and and yeah, it's um, it's going to be a very good game. And obviously, as I said, I think it's going to be three uh, 0 Liverpool with Mane, Salah, and Firmino scoring. The final game I'm going to be talking about in this video is the game which is arguably uh, Tottenham's biggest game in the history of the European Cup. It is the second leg, obviously, against uh, Manchester City after winning amazingly in the first leg. I do apologise, I have got a bit of this bit of a cold in this video, so if you see me kind of deeply breathing in, that is why. Um, but anyway, moving back onto the game, uh, obviously uh, Tottenham won a uh, 1-0 uh, in the uh, first leg out their brand new stadium in the first game, at uh, their brand new stadium in Europe, and um, it was a very big 1-0 win obviously for them, and very crucial that they didn't allow Man City to get an away goal, which they so easily could have done. And um, obviously Aguero missing a penalty um, proved decisive in that. Um, and as in terms of their play, they this is the best I've seen Spurs play, honestly, in my opinion, in uh, in, in quite a while in terms of in Europe. It's, they've never been a team known for, for getting into Europe, let alone doing well in Europe, because obviously they slipped up last season, losing uh, at home to Juventus 2-1, which obviously knocked them out of the Champions League. And they are very capable of being big teams, like obviously getting the uh, draw against Barcelona, which allowed them to uh, go progress to the knockout stages of the Champions League. 
and then obviously beating uh, Real Madrid uh, 2-1 last season. It was, it was very, it, it's been very up and down, I could say, in terms of for Tottenham Hotspur, because they've had a few iffy results in the uh, in the Premier League, obviously, a couple of losses, a couple of wins, a few draws here and there. It's been it's been in balance, and obviously Arsenal have gone back ahead of them, or have they? No, not no. My fault. Arsenal, Arsenal have actually gone back ahead of them, but they've uh, uh, stayed ahead of Arsenal. Obviously, at the weekend, Arsenal uh, losing to Everton, which uh, is going to be very decisive in them battling for the top four. But that's not what this video is about. I know I messed up a bit here and there, but but that's me, unfortunately. Um, and I think City can easily whitewash them and. Uh, put their dreams of getting into semi-finals completely away because to be honest neither team uh, in the in their history really have uh, progressed um, past the quarter-final stage obviously Tottenham haven't and Manchester City haven't progressed uh, through to the semi-final stage of their Champions League and it's obviously a big night um, for both of them just like the first leg was and honestly I think City are going to win it and not to put any Tottenham fans down they're not winning it because obviously they won the first leg and City will need to get two goals because obviously they didn't get an away goal um, in the home leg uh, for Tottenham. And, you know, it's I'm not a City fan, obviously I'm a United fan, which um, I'm not trying to bother any City fans about saying, oh, they're going to lose. Um, to be honest, I think they're going to win. Um, I think as far as um, scoring goes, I could see it being one of those games where it goes like 1-0, 1-1, 2-1, 2-2, -1, and potentially uh, going up the ranks in terms of the scoreline. And... I think overall I would say the score is going to be 2-1 Manchester City because I think Tottenham will score and obviously that will uh, take Manchester City, no it won't, it won't take Manchester City through, what am I saying, <laughs> it won't take um, Manchester City through, it will take uh, Tottenham through on the away goals rule and put them into their first semi-final in their history. And as far as scorers go I could say uh, Son's going to do it because Son's been absolutely amazing for Tottenham obviously getting their first goal at their brand new stadium against Crystal Palace um, a couple of weeks ago and then uh, as far as City scorers go I can see Aguero making up for his sad 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 penalty miss um, against well penalty save really but it's a miss regardless um, against uh, Hugo Lloris at the uh, new stadium and then as far as other scorers go I think Sterling's going to score and I do honestly feel sorry for Sterling after what happened in the international break with apparent racism being shouted but I'm not going to go into that in this video because I do feel really, really sorry for, for all black English players that have been shouted abuse because this game, we say no to racism. It's it's not what we want, not for any player, whether you're black, white, um, Asian or what, whatever race you are, there should be no need for racism or anything from fans because I really don't respect it. I'm, I would never do that personally myself and I know I've kind of gone into it a bit and I didn't really want to, but I felt like I had to say something because... It's not right in any terms, and I do hope we can stop racism eventually or put just something in place that can stop people uh, throwing like stuff like bananas on the pitch, shouting racist things. It's, it's just not right. Like If white people would do that to black people, they wouldn't like it, obviously. And it's, if it was the other way around, even, it's they wouldn't like it at all. So um, I do hope you have enjoyed this video. I know I rambled on a bit at the end there about racism, but I had to obviously say something, like I said, I don't really like it and I really do hope um, UEFA can do their best to even preserve it, let alone stop it. It's it, it's going to be difficult but I'm sure it will be sorted in the future. And to any black football players out there, I really do respect all of you. You're all great talents and whether you play for England, Colombia or whatever um, nation you represent, you're doing your country proud and you just need to put this racism out of your mind and just block it out and just focus on your football. So I do hope you guys have enjoyed this video, um, I've just said that twice to be fair, but please leave a like, comment and do not forget to subscribe and I'll see you all later. Peace!